A lot has happened in the world of golfing since the last time we met, guys. From Jed Morgan winning a chance to participate in the U.S. Open, to various sanctions the PGA Tour might impose to all golfers who plan to defect to the new tour. All this and more in today's video. Stick around to the end to learn all. Great news! Rising star Jed Morgan punches ticket to U.S. Open and St. Andrews after claiming Order of Merit title. Jed Morgan will play in his first majors, this year's U.S. Open and Open Championship, after securing the Norman von Nida medal as the Order of Merit champion at the IS. PS Handa PGA Tour of Australasia. The talented Queenslander, just 22, was confirmed as the winner today by the PGA Australia chair Roger Davis, with an unassailable lead ahead of the tailor-made Building Services NT PGA Championship, the final event of the tour. The rising star of Australian golf earned just over $190,000 for the season, with the PGA of Australia ensuring the Norman von Nida medalist would have an automatic entry to the US Open at Brookline Country Club next month, and the Open Championship at St. Andrews in July. For the first time ever, Morgan will form one of three players on the PGA Tour of Australasia to gain a DP World Tour playing card, with the top three placed on the Order of Merit gaining exemption. The 2022-23 DP World Tour season will begin at Morgan's hometown, Brisbane, in November at the Fortinet Australian PGA Championship at Royal Queensland, the same event that he won in stunning fashion earlier this year. The major championships and DP World Tour opportunities are substantial for a player who has only been a professional for less than a year, capping off a stellar rise to prominence for the Golf Australia Rookie Squad member and the 2020 Australian Amateur Champion. The Norman von Nida medal, struck in honor of one of Australia's greatest professional players, is awarded each year to the Order of Merit Champion on the ISPS Handa PGA Tour of Australasia. The final Order of Merit placings offer a significant carrot for those in contention, with everything to play for at the NT PGA Championship at Palmerston this weekend. Blake Windred, New South Wales, currently sits in second with a $14,055 buffer to third place Andrew Dott, Queensland, with the likes of Demi Papadatis, New South Wales, and Louis Dabalar, Queensland, and seventh place Aaron Pike, Northern Territory, all a chance of leaping into the top three in Darwin to claim European status. The top five on the Order of Merit list are also given exemptions into the final stage of Corn Ferry Tour Qualifying School in the United States this year, so there is plenty on the line this weekend at the NTPGA. Next, why he's playing Greg Norman's LIV Golf Opener in London. For young Australian pro Jed Moore, Morgan, there were a few reasons to tee up in the opening event of Greg Norman's cashed-up LIV Golf Series. LIV Golf, headed up by two-time major winner Norman, kicks off the first of its seven regular series events, which will boast $25 million US dollar purses. Morgan is one of six Australians taking part in the opening event at Centurion Club outside London starting today. The first reason was Morgan's schedule was free. The 22-year-old won the Australian PGA Championship last year by 11 shots, and that win came with a DP World Tour card, formerly named European Tour. However, his DP World status does not kick in until next season, and so the Queenslander has gaps in the schedule during the middle part of 2022, outside the US Open and Open Championship. Morgan will play in both majors, courtesy of topping the PGA Tour of Australasia's Order of Merit last season. Morgan was invited to take part in the LIV Golf Opener alongside fellow Australians Matt Jones, Travis Smith, Kevin Ewan, Wade Ormsby, and Blake Windrick. The second reason is there's a lot of money on the line. LIV Golf has been subject to a wave of criticism given the operation is financed by the Saudi Arabian government, which has a record of human rights atrocities. Much of the controversy has been aimed already at mega-rich golfers, such as two-time major winner Dustin Johnson, who has joined LIV Golf. But for Morgan, the whopping sums are no doubt appealing given he only turned pro last year. And lastly, Morgan said the tournament would provide a chance to test himself against star players such as Phil Mickelson, Sergio Garcia, and Johnson before making his major debut at next week's US Open at the Country Club at Brookline, near Boston. In other golf news, PGA Tour reveals sanctions. Greg Norman responds as pro golf's battle heats up. The PGA Tour announced Thursday that it is suspending any current and future tour members that defect to LIV Golf. In a memo to PGA Tour members, PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan said he was responding to those listed in this week's LIV Golf Invitational Field, including Dustin Johnson, Phil Mickelson, and Sergio Garcia, saying they are no longer able to compete in tour-sanctioned events. Monahan did not specify how long the suspensions would be. Others listed as suspended were Lee Westwood, Kevin Na, Taylor Gooch, Charles Schwartzel, and Louis Oosthuizen. In response to Monaghan's memo, LIV Golf released the following statement. Today's announcement by the PGA Tour is vindictive, and it deepens the divide between the Tour and its members. It's troubling that the Tour, an organization dedicated to creating opportunities for golfers to play the game, is the entity blocking golfers from playing. This certainly is not the last word on this topic. The era of free agency is beginning, as we are proud to have a full field of players joining us in London. 
London and beyond. Monaghan has long promised that any tour member who competes in a tournament on a rival league without a conflicting event release would face disciplinary measures from the PGA Tour, and the tour denied said releases to players who requested them to compete in LIV Golf's inaugural London event this week. The tour is adamant they have the legal authority to issue disciplinary measures, and LIV Golf CEO Greg Norman has openly expressed his desire for players to challenge that authority. Norman additionally telegraphed his litigation threats in an open letter to the tour. Next, the delicate marriage between the PGA Tour and Bryson DeChambeau is over. Bryson DeChambeau called PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan on Tuesday to say he will play in the LIV Golf event in Oregon later this month, and there's nothing that could change his mind. DeChambeau is a transcendent figure in the game, one of the precious few golfers capable of capturing general sports fans' attention. At 28, he is one of the game's longest hitters, a major champion, and a compelling enough figure to finish fifth in the inaugural Player Impact program, behind only Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Rory McIlroy, and Jordan Spieth. In that respect, the news that DeChambeau, alongside similarly polarizing figure Patrick Reed, would join the group of players cashing in with LIV was a gut punch to the PGA Tour. But there was, however, an accompanying emotion pulsing through PGA Tour circles on Thursday, AEST, the type of relief that comes at the end of a turbulent and often toxic relationship. Interviews with a broad spectrum of sources, including PGA Tour players, employees, agents, and caddies, produced various perspectives, but consistently portrayed DeChambeau and Reed as two elite talents whose play was often overshadowed by their difficult behavior. Representatives for DeChambeau and Reed did not respond to requests for comment on Thursday. It began to feel like an unwinnable situation, a tour source said of DeChambeau. It was clear that he did not feel like he had to play by anyone's rules. Finally, Phil Mickelson refused to talk about one thing in his long-awaited press conference at LIV Golf. The familiar smile was there, but when he removed the aviator sunglasses, Phil Mickelson's eyes betrayed an understandable anxiety as he took his seat. On the eve of the first edition of the LIV Golf Invitational Series, and for the first time since February, the six-time major champion was facing the media and having to publicly explain, justify, clarify the last four months of his life. On stage with the other members of his HY Flyers GC team this week, Justin Harding, Chase Kepka, and TK Chantananawat, questions for the unshaven Mickelson not surprisingly dominated the proceedings. During the 28-minute conference, the others answered just one question after the opening remarks, prompted by a member of the LIV media team. In what was inevitably a wide-ranging discussion, a few things popped up regularly. On four occasions, Mickelson underlined the fact that he does not condone human rights violations. In reference to his life going forward, he uttered the word balance seven times. Speaking slowly and carefully, Mickelson also made it clear he wasn't going to discuss a couple of things. PGA Tour issues were out of bounds, as was anything related to journalist Alan Shipnuck, with whom Mickelson had shared some indiscreet and provocative views regarding LIV golf and Saudi Arabia in general. Still, mixed in with some understandable mea culping, Mickelson, who confirmed he will play in next week's U.S. Open, displayed hints of defiance over his decision to jump the PGA Tour ship and compete here this week without a release from the circuit where he has competed for more than three decades. Well, unfortunately, guys, this is all the time we had for today. Make sure to like and follow for more golfing news. Cheers!